Okay, uh, what I'd like to do is um, uh, start with a little bit of focus here. Um, what I like to do in design is I like to ask uh, folks like uh, Adi Akinsanya and, and Marwan, when we're uh, working on something unusual, what I like to do is find very simple models. It's great to have computer programs, uh, yeah, drawings, etc. but sometimes just to verify constructability, verify everybody's on the same page, and we have large complex teams on this job. It's never just one person or two people. Um, I like to do these kinds of things, and this design firm has been really great for doing this kind of thing. It's just a simple foam board model, and we have different colors here, and the bridge is not going to be this color, but what we've got here is um, a very simple model with the top of Pier E2. So superstructure is up here. There's a box girder bridge over here, self anchor suspension bridge, or the topic box. There's another one here. These are the columns. Obviously, the columns are much, uh, much, much larger. This is on the order of about 75 meters. That's over 200 feet um, in the real world. This is a metric job. Okay, so a box sits over here. The orange elements here, those are the bearings. And Dr. Nadir and others in this team, they've designed these. And bearings are really, really tricky things. On a bridge, in my, in my experience, the two hardest things to design and maintain on a bridge are bearings and deck joints. Now, what's tricky about a bearing is, it's, it's, a, it's a bottleneck of tremendous stresses. Imagine a bridge 25 meters across, that's on the order, that's like 75 feet with its self-weight and all kinds of structures, you know, trucks, etc. Now, all of that weight has to funnel right down through these two bearings. And bearings, not only do they have to carry tremendous concentrated load, they also have to allow for movement. You know, lots of times you want something big and strong and you don't want it to move. Here, bearings, they have to, and that's because bridges, when a big truck goes over it, it does flex. And when it gets hot, it expands. When it gets cold, it shrinks. Okay? So these bearings are designed to carry tremendous loads this way and vertical. But Dr. Dane Darren and his team have designed these to be able to rotate. So when there's a truck out here in my arm, and it goes down like this, it's allowed to rotate. So these are, these are very complicated things. And they're very important to the bridge. They're, if you will, kind of sacred ground. Now the blue elements, and, and if there's an earthquake, if the ground starts to move, if you will, Okay. And there's translation, um, all the kinematic variables, displacement, velocity, acceleration, the ground starts to move around. That means this starts to move around. And the, the mass of the structure, there's a tremendous load that gets transferred from this inertia of the superstructure down to this pier. These, we are designing these not to be damaged. The place, the structural fuse, is down here in this system. Okay. Now, we do not want these bearings compromised in that condition. So what Dr. Nadir and his team have done, they've designed the blue elements. These are shear keys. What they do is they lock the bridge and the pier together so it can't move relatively this way, the kind of things that could happen in an earthquake. So they protect these bearings. So those shear keys um, are important. Okay? Now, these, these shear keys that are directly over the pier, this one and this one, this is where the bolts broke. And it's the 2008 that commissioners were talking about. It's not going to work here. These are samples of the rods that broke. And Mazen, would you be so kind as to bring me the other three, um, the other three um, bolts? Okay. Now I want you to notice something, and Steve Heminger and the commissioners, they were right on target. Look how large these are. Okay? They're three inch in diameter. And some of the other rods, they might, have, they might be of the same material, but imagine, imagine something like this, and at one point it's almost liquid steel and as it's manufactured, and then as it, as it cools down, imagine something like this, near liquid, and it's cooling down, the outside, the outside cools first. And it hardens first, but the inside is not yet cool. And then the inside starts to cool, and what does it do when it cools? It shrinks. So it starts to work against the outside. And then sometimes there are outside um, cooling systems, like, for example, quench and tempered, that also adds to the outside can be different than the inside. Now, if you have a, a large diameter piece of rebar, and Mazen, if you'd be so kind, large diameter rebar, and I need the PT too. This is reinforcing steel, very common. Okay? This has the same kind, of, uh, same kind of process going on, only it's not the same grade of steel. This steel is on the order of 150 KSI, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. This stuff is on the order of 60, 60 KSI. Okay? And the smaller diameter bar, the less, the less cooling problems you have. Okay? 
Now, this is a big fastener. It's a threaded rod. It's really not a bolt. It's a fastener. These are some other bolts that we have on the British, just so you see. This is the one that clamps down the um, cable bands. These are the type that are in the towers. Can you pull that up for a little bit longer? Just give us a second. This is the tower. Same with ones in the tower. We've got way over 100,000 in the tower. This, uh, this one is, uh, well, this one's a 325. This is kind of a, a very standard kind of bolt. And also, I, I just want to uh, highlight one thing. One of the differences between, uh, one additional difference between a 490 and a, um, a rod like this, 54 BD, um, this, when it's put in place, I've never seen anybody actually tighten these up to actually yield. Where a 490, by design, 99% of the time, as you tighten the nut, you actually yield the steel. You take it beyond its um, elastic level. So the clamping forces per uh, load per cross-sectional area on a 490, it goes way, way past yield. So the clamping that a, a, a bolt does, okay, it's, it's different depending on how you apply them. Okay? Uh, a rivet is a, is a thermal clamping, and a, a bolt like this, it's using, uh, you know, everybody took physics, right? Remember the seven basic machines? This is one of the screws, right? And it's one of the basic machines, and it clamps everything together. So these things are actually used um, differently. Okay, so um, I also want to highlight, I heard discussions about what is the process here. I want to share with you a little bit of that process. I took poor <laughs> Dr. Nadir and Ade through um, a very difficult time the last few, uh, last, last few weeks. We basically started with, um, Ade Marlon, what was it? We started out with like nine different alternatives, or was right. it more, right? And what we did is we advanced the designs from concept and kept advancing them, and these guys had multiple people working on each alternative, and we would call them, call them, uh, remove them as we, as a team, we thought it was not the best solution, not the best solution, not the best solution, and we were constantly turning to experts about, well, with material, turning to experts in constructability, um, et cetera. So I wanted to make sure that's, um, that's kind of highlighted. Um, this model, um, the purple here, this is the area where um, that was described. I think it was uh, I think it was Andre Boutros who um, uh, was describing that. And I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Nadir to go through a little bit more of that. But I want to make sure you hear why this one was so efficient. Um, Ade and uh, um, Dr. Nadir found a way to put that clamping force. These are the bolts that are um, that are broken here, here, and here. These are not. You can't replace them because the column's in the way. These you can get in and replace if we ever needed to, right? But these you can't, so we have to have an additional design element, and that's this solution, okay? Now, um, the alternative BD, it was like a collar that went around the outside and extended out. That extension, where we connected onto the pier, it had to reach out to areas where there's no internal elements of this pier that potentially could be damaged. Here, their retrofit puts that clamping right where it needs to be. It doesn't have to reach out. It goes right into the pier. And that clamping, if you will, it, it's kind of like, I love one of the commissioners said he was a farmer or a rancher. Those people always have a good sense of things. I don't really call this pre-stressing. I, I actually think of it as a tie down, and that's really what it's doing. Now the elements that we're basically tying it down with is pre-stressing steel, and that's what this is. This is another kind of, you know, I'm using the word incorrectly, but I think it's effective here, another type of fastener. And this kind of steel is not, not you know, 60 KSI steel, 60 um, 60,000 pounds per square inch steel, not um, you know, not uh, not 150, 160, uh, sometimes even 170 KSI steel. This stuff is 270 KSI, so it's 200,000, 270,000 pounds per square inch. So it's really, really strong. And basically, what what the design team has come up with, and of course, there's a lot of this stuff. Um, it basically goes through into the pier wraps around, and there are many, many, many of these that come down, and it hogs it down. And it creates enough friction to clamp these down, right? So when two things are clamped together and there's a good normal force, they can't move relative to each other, okay? So that's really what they're trying to do here, clamping these things down. Now at the end, at the very bottom, the very bottom here, I want you to look over here, and, and Dr. Wabi and I are not going to be able to pick this up, but where those, where that PT, where that pre-stressing, that's the new connector we're going to use, the PT. This is what it looks like. Here's the same PT, only we'll have many, many of these. And this is the anchorage. And these will be actually not horizontal. These will actually be on the bottom, and there'll be many of these. So this is the new, if you will, anchor plate. And these are uh, the pre-stressing strands, right? And there'll be many of them. And with that, what I'd like to do is um, 
Marwan, would you, would you be please so kind as to um, kind of walk them through what kind of analysis and what kind of uh, design you've got going for us? Thank you, Brian. Uh, good morning. 